So, you want to spend all your money on upgrading to a full frame camera? Before you do so, there are a few very important things you need to know. Is it even better? Is it worth the money? In today's video, we're going to find out. I will focus on the depth of field, the capability to do handheld filming and the bokeh. In the next few minutes, I will show you different shots of different setups. I will take several photos and videos from different distances with the same settings. Therefore, I'm using the Sony A6300, which is an APS-C camera, together with a 90mm macro lens and the Nikon D750, also with a 90mm macro lens. I pre-ordered the new Sony Alpha 7, but at the moment I don't own a full-frame camera yet. That's why I borrowed this camera from a friend. Grüße gehen raus an Marco to do this comparison for you guys. I use a Tamron 90mm macro lens. It's an f2.8, which got a magnification of 1 to 1. That means that an object of the size of the sensor will completely fill the frame. The Sony lens is also a 90mm macro lens, which offers a magnification of 1 to 1 at the closest distance possible, which is 28cm. So we have two cameras with both 24 megapixels and that same lens with the same focal length. The only difference, and that difference is huge, is the sensor size. Actually, the size of the full frame lens is 1.5 times larger than of the APS-C, resulting in a crop factor of 1.5. Let me explain this to you. Let's take this example. Imagine you point the camera at someone's eye. This is the light which goes through your lens. And that's the light which falls on your full frame sensor. And the inner white frame represents the light which falls on an APC sensor with the same lens. It's like cropping the image by keeping the full 24 megapixel. To get the same field of view with a full frame, you would have to multiply the focal length of your lens by 1.5. In this case, that means that you need 135mm focal length lens to get the same field of view like the APS-C. Enough theory, I don't want to bore you. Let's take a look at some pictures and videos I took using both setups. This footage is taken with the APS-C sensor at a maximum magnification of 1 to 1. That means at a distance of 28cm to get as much detail as possible of the little shield bug. If you're already a subscriber of this YouTube channel, you probably know that I'm kind of macro photography freak. That's why I need to show you the facets of that compound I hear. Nice. I'm still filming with the APS-C sensor, but I moved a little bit more far away. This makes it much more easy to focus on the eyes of that beetle. The field of depth is a real issue when you think of filming at a macro distance because the field of depth is so small and it's so hard to keep the eye into focus. One solution might be to close the aperture even more. I'm filming at f9, which is an ideal value for close-up filming. Of course you can close the aperture even more, but then noise will appear and your footage looks like garbage. Thanks for your help, buddy! Time to have a look on some full-frame footage and then I'm doing a side-by-side -side comparison. Check out this insanely long mouth part of that stink bug. They use it to sip our fruits. Okay, that's the footage taken with the full frame also at f9. The field of death is extremely small and it's super hard to focus. Do you remember that crop factor? Now the image is a little bit wider because full frame cameras don't have a crop factor. It's actually one. Here, both cameras are filming at 1 to 1 magnification, that means at a focus distance of 28 centimeters. And you notice that the field of view and the field of depth is totally different here. And you still remember Marco? Last week he found model number 2 dead in his garden. A giant hornet. These shots were taken with the APS-C sensor. Creepy or beautiful? What do you think? Please leave a comment below. If you're not interested in macro photography, you can skip the next 20 seconds. Otherwise, lean back and relax. Okay, back to the comparison. Why did I use this Hornet? Basically because it does not move. I can use ISO 100, I can use continuous light to compare the image quality at the shortest focus distance. Same result here, the field of depth of the full frame is extremely shallow. 
When it comes to close-up photography, the APC sensor is definitely my favorite. But what about portrait photography? Here, a small field of depth is extremely useful to separate the foreground from the background. So let's jump back into the real world. Let's have a look on some big objects like flowers, for example, especially on the bokeh. APC f2.8 bokeh, awesome. Yeah, it, it was kind of windy that day. What do you think? Is it APC or full frame? And this one? When you compare both, the bokeh is actually identical. So what's the difference here? Basically, it's the crop factor. When you want to achieve the same bokeh as the full frame, you have to open the aperture by the factor of the crop factor, in this case 1.5. So what does that mean for you? If you're interested in macro photography, the APC sensor is definitely the sensor of your choice. It is cheap, you get a higher magnification and if you're dealing with low light issues and noise, just use a flash, done. Nice. Same for white light photography, 400 millimeter lens becomes a 600 millimeter lens, you save a lot of money. You don't have to buy expensive long focal length, just use the benefit of the crop factor. Nice. But if you're interested in portrait photography and a shallow field of depth, full frame body is the body of your choice. Yeah, that's it for today. Thanks for watching. If you disagree or if you have any questions, please leave a comment below. If you're interested in this kind of content, maybe you want to be part of this community and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And maybe see you next week. Yeah.